Now, one of the things we keep coming back to is disparity and disparity limits. Having too much disparity is bad because it makes the viewer's eyes look apart. Now, you can use a stereoscopic calculator, as I've mentioned before, or a program on your computer, or an iPad application, something like that, to actually work all this stuff out. You can enter in your screen sizes, you can enter in your focal lengths, you can enter in the distances to the objects that you're shooting, your background and everything else, and come up with an optimum interaxial that will give you the correct amount of on-screen disparity. And that's certainly one way to work, and I, I'm not saying you shouldn't work like that. What I am saying though is it's a hard way to work. It's a lot of work, a lot of effort, and it's very easy to make a mistake and for problems to creep in. Now let's have a look at some figures here for the moment. These numbers here are the disparity limits that Sky Television, the UK's 3D broadcaster, have set down and laid out for their productions. Now it also happens that 3Net are also working to very similar specifications. They want an average of 2% of positive disparity across their program, with a maximum of 4%. Now, why 2%? Why have they chosen this figure of 2%? Well, 2% works very well across a broad range of screen sizes. On a large screen television, it will give you a good realistic depth. But scale it up to a cinema screen and 2% is not going to give you huge amounts of excess disparity. Yes, there will be more than 65 millimeters of disparity on a cinema screen, but if you take into account that 1% of look apart that's allowable and the distance that the audience typically sits from a cinema screen, it will still be watchable and viewable. So people with a large home cinema installation in their home will be able to watch the 3D from this and a program could perhaps with a small amount of post-production work, also be shown in the cinema. And the other thing is they're using a percentage, 2%. That makes it really easy to measure your disparity because all you need to do is measure across the width of your monitor screen and work out what 2% is. And then you could mark on that screen with a China graph pencil or get a piece of clear tape, put it on the screen and with a marker pen, mark 2% increments and work to that. So that makes life very, very simple because it doesn't matter what size of screen your monitor is, you just measure and mark for 2%. Now, if you're using the trans video monitors, they have the ability to generate a grid over the top of the monitor and that grid you can set to whatever percentage or whatever number of pixels you require, making it very, very easy to measure your disparity. Now, when you're working to a known disparity, it actually makes it very easy to use a very simple shooting method. This simple shooting method is known as the Derobe method. It was worked out by a very well-known cinematographer and stereographer, Alain Derobe. And this method really, really works, yet it's incredibly simple. In fact, there was a movie recently shot using this method called PINA, and PINA has been nominated for an Academy Award because of the quality of its 3D, which just shows that this method is a good, reliable uh, and, and workable system for generating 3D. So how does this method work? Well, it sits somewhere between shooting parallel and shooting converged. You see, you can change your convergence point in two different ways. One is by changing the angles of the camera and changing the convergence point in the traditional way by moving the angle of the cameras. Or you can change your convergence point by changing the interaxial. Because if your cameras are converged, as you change the interaxial, where they're pointing changes. And the Derobe method uses that to its advantage. So here's how you set up to shoot with the Derobe method. You start by zeroing out your cameras. You calibrate your rig, so you bring your cameras down to zero interaxial and align both cameras so you have a 2D image. Because of course, when both cameras are perfectly aligned, it's the same as having a 2D camera with just one lens. 
with the cameras aligned and with zero interaxial, we take the most distant object in our scene, in this case the back wall of the room, and we converge the cameras until we have measured 2% of disparity on the screen, or whatever your desired uh, maximum disparity is. Now we simply move the cameras apart to converge on whatever it is that we're shooting. So in this scene, if we want to shoot on this foreground object here, we just move the cameras apart until they converge on it. The beauty of this method is that no matter how far apart the cameras are, no matter what our interaxial is, we will never exceed our maximum on-screen disparity. The maximum disparity is achieved at the point where we set the cameras up, at zero interaxial. When you move the cameras apart, the interaxial increases and the disparity actually decreases very slightly. The beauty of this system, though, goes beyond the fact that you will not exceed your maximum disparity. One of the nice things that happens with this is that as you alter the distance from the camera within your scene of the sub subjects that you're shooting, the amount of depth in your scene will also be adjusted. An example of that is when we're shooting a very deep shot from our scene, uh, converging on something quite close to the camera, say, then the cameras will be relatively close together. But because you'll have something very much in the foreground as well as in the background, you will have a very good sensation of depth, even though you have a very small interaxial. But let's say now we're shooting something much further away within that same scene. So to converge on that, we move the cameras apart. But because we're now shooting objects that are closer to our back wall, and, and overall the depth in the shot is actually less, because the cameras are further apart, we exaggerate to some degree the depth in the, sh in the actual shot, so that when we cut from the one shot, the long shot with lots of depth in it, or lots of objects with lots of depth cues, to the other shot, the, the shorter shot, the compensation by moving the cameras apart helps cut those two shots together smoothly without the depth jumping and feeling strange or being difficult to view. So this method does create very nice scenes. So to recap for the derobe method, bring the cameras to zero, pick the most distant object within the scene that you're shooting, tow the cameras in or converge them at the zero point until you have the measured maximum disparity on your monitor, then bring the cameras apart to converge on the object or subject that you want to converge on. And you would then shoot your entire scene this way. There is no need or no reason to reset or change the angle of the cameras during the entire scene. It's all done with interaxial. This makes it really simple to use this method because you never change the angle, also known as the angulation, of the cameras within the entire scene. It's all done just by changing the spacing, the interaxial, uh, the distance between the lenses. So it's very, very quick to reset a shot, to start a new shot, and it will cut together nice and smoothly. Now obviously when you change from one scene to another, you will need to go back to your zero point and reset your maximum disparity. Because as your, as your total scene depth changes, you will need to reset that. But it's a really straightforward method to use and I highly recommend it to you, especially if you're starting out in 3D, because it really is very, very simple and very, very easy to use.